all of you settle down. Welcome all for the morning prayer session. Sit comfortably. Gently close your eyes. Let us start with three rounds of Omkara. Oh, 
a few years ago, there was a small box story which was published in uh, the Vedanta Kesari magazine. It's a very interesting way, a new way of relating to the God. There, there, there is a sect of sannyasis called as the Ramanandis. So they are devoted to Rama. So what they do is they go to various places of, they are sannyasis essentially, they go to various places of pilgrimage and then especially Vaishnava tradition. Say they go to such places and worship and in that way they spend their life in a holy communion or connection with the Lord Rama. So uh, a sect of sannyasis, they, uh, such Ramananda sannyasis, they come to Ayodhya. So this is a small story or anecdote which was published in Vedanta Kesari magazine of Ramakrishna Mutt. So a set of sannyasis they come. So in Ayodhya you can see that there are so many places connected with the Shri Rama. Of course the Rama Janmabhumi is there, the Hanuman Mandir is there, Sita Ki Rasoi, all such places, the Sarayu river is there. So many places which are connected to Rama is there. So what do those set of sannyasis do? They wake up early in the morning, go to Sarayu, take bath and then go for Diksha and then they collect the food, have their food, go to various temples, sit in the temples, do bhajan etc. So this is how they do. But one exception sannyasi is there. That sannyasi, he has a small, he establishes a small hut in that unlike other Ramananda sannyasis, he does not go to that any of those temples. Though he has come to, uh, taken, he was along with the other sannyasis, he has come, he does not go to none of the temples. There are so many places to visit in Ayodhya, but he does not go to even one temple. What he does? He wakes up, goes to Sarayu, takes bath, does some diksha, comes back and again closets himself into his small kutira. So, what does he do? He has a book and then he keeps reading that book. That's all. And what is that book? It is Yoga Vasishtha. He is reading that book. That's all. The entire day he spends like this. So many other fellow sannyasis, they say, Oh, you have come to this Punya Kshetra. Why don't you come? Let's go. Let's see that there is a Ram Ki Darbar. So many such other places here, wonderful places. Why can't we go and see? Why are you sitting alone? Why are you knocking yourself up? Great hesitation that sannyasi does not come out of that. No, no, I am content with doing what I am doing here. So in this way he spends many days and then the pressure from the peer sannyasis, fellow sannyasis is mounting. And then unable to, uh, he says that if I come there will be problem. I will not come. So then, uh, but still they drag him. The fellow sannyasis, they drag him. And then at least, if you don't go to this place or that place, just come to the place where there is the Ram Ki Darbar, where Rama is uh, seated with the Sita, Lakshmana, Bharata, Shatrughna, Hanuman, Vibhishan, all those are seated and Rama, Raja Rama is sitting in the throne. So that temple at least, if you have that darshan, you have, it, it can be taken as that you have the, had the darshan of everything. That's where I should not come, this sannyasi says, but still they drag him. And when this sannyasi enters into that particular temple, so that Rama Vigraha is there, you can see that the seated Rama Vigraha in the throne stands up. So why everyone was amazed? Why the Rama's statue which was in a seated Simhasana position, the Rama's statue becomes, uh, comes to a standing position? Everyone is amazed. What is this happening? They did not understand. And this sannyasi immediately runs out back to his Kutira Ashram. So then everyone is baffled. What has happened here? No one knows. So then everyone again run behind that sannyasi, goes to the ashram and then asks what, what just happened? We didn't understand. Please tell me. So then he slowly relates what, what, is, what he was doing. So he says that uh, what I am doing every day, my method of upasana of Shri Rama is, I consider myself as a uh, Vasishtha. So in Yoga Vasishtha, the teacher is Vasishtha uh, and the student is Rama. So I consider myself, my, the bhava that I have assumed for devotion to Rama is, I am Vasishtha, the teacher, and Rama is my student. So I have this Yoga Vasishtha and then 
it, I feel that Rama is sitting before me like a student and I am teaching. When the teacher enters a particular place, what will the student do? He will stand up. So this explains why the Rama statue came to a standing position. So the point is, Viteva Putrasya, Sakheva Sakyuhu, Priya Priyaya and not only that we can do the bhavana of the God as Guru, you can also do the bhavana of the God as a student even. So, the God can be seen in the student even. That is democracy in devotion. Our registrar sir just told that today is the day of democracy, international day of democracy. Where else will you find democracy? If you find democracy even in devotion, it is not rigid. You can relate to the God in any multifarious way and this doesn't come now. Since uh, many thousand years we have such a kind of democracy, freedom to choose the way in which you want to relate to the God. So when in devotion itself, in spiritual pursuits itself, you have multiple options, your own right, you can express what is to be said about our mundane day-to-day -day administrative purposes for which we have to do our democratic duty. So even in that democratic duty, the guidance comes from our spiritual, Vedic, Puranic, Shastric tradition. Hence, in doing our democratic dharma, be it in spirituality, be it in the mundane world, the, the guidance from Mahabharata is to be remembered. Na jat kamat, na bhayat, na lobhat, dharmam kejet, jivitasya api heto ho. What does Mahabharata say? Don't exercise your democratic or dharma, democratic dharma out of some kind of a uh, desire, kama, bhaya. Don't be threatened to make a particular choice or lobha or don't be allured, don't lose your mind in making a particular choice and even if your life is threatened, jivita syap he doho, don't fail to make a uh, choice made out of a well discriminated analysis. Hence, uh, this guidance again on democracy, doing our democratic duty. Most of you are now eligible for voting, I think. So, hence, the guidance both in spiritual realm and also in the realm where we are about to face that uh, democratic duty, we have to do that in 2024. Let us remember whoever will stand for dharma, we have to elect and we should not again exercise our dharma or duty, democratic duty out of any or fear or favor or other thing. Whoever will uphold dharma towards him or towards that entity, we have to uh, follow and exercise our democratic duty. Good morning. Happy Democratic Day for all of you who are the citizens of the biggest democratic day of the world. I remember one quote from our ex-Prime Minister Sri Atal Bairi Vajpayee Democracy is not just an election, it's creating an opportunity or culture of participation and citizenship. So, by motivating that word, we are allowing the participation of all our student union members. Naturopathy is there, Ayurveda is there, Yoga is there and I call one from nursing also to join, to participate in flag hosting today.